7.3, anti-differentiation by parts. We have the product rule in integral form. When u and v are differentiable functions of x, the product rule for differentiation tells us that the derivative of a function times a function equals the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Integrating both sides with respect to x and rearranging leads to the integral equation. So if we subtract over the v du dx, we get d dx uv minus v du dx when we subtract over. Then if we integrate both sides, we get the integral of a function times the derivative of another one is equal to the integral of d dx uv dx, which means we have the integral of the derivative and those undo each other and we get u times v minus the integral of v du dx dx, and there's not much we can really do with that. When this equation is written in the simpler differential notation, we obtain the following formula. So the integral of a function times the derivative of another one is u times v minus integral of v du. So that's what we have to know. uv minus integral of v du. Example one, using integration by parts. Evaluate the integral of x cosine of x du. We're going to let u equal x. And we're going to usually pick the one where if we took the derivative enough, we would end up with zero. For example, the derivative of x is one, the derivative of one is zero. So we're going to let u equal the function that in which we, if we take enough derivatives, we get zero. So the derivative is equal to just one dx. We're going to let dv equal the other function, the cosine of x dx, and on this one we're going to integrate both sides. So v is equal to the sine of x. Now the integral of x cosine of x dx is equal to u times v, which is x sine of x, so u times v, and then minus the integral of v du, which is sine of x dx. We have x sine of x and then minus, uh, actually plus, cosine of x plus c, because the integral of sine is negative cosine. Repeated use of integration by parts. We're going to let u equal x squared, so that du is 2x, and dv is equal to ex e to the x dx, and now v is equal to ex. So we have u times v, x squared e to the x, then minus integral of v du which is 2x e to the x, and I needed a dx here, uh, dx. Well, we don't know how to integrate that yet, so we're going to repeat the process. u is equal to 2x, the derivative of 2x is 2dx, and then we have dv is equal to e to the x dx, and when we integrate, we get v equals e to the x. So now we bring this down. We have x squared e to the x minus... Uh, we have u times v, so 2x e to the x, minus integral of v du, which is 2 e to the x dx. Well, now we have something we can actually take the integral of. So we have x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x, and then that's going to be plus, when we run the negative through, uh, 2 e to the x and then plus c. Example 3, solving an initial value problem. Solve the differential equation dy dx equals x natural log of x, subject to the initial condition that y equals negative 1 when x equals 1. Well, normally we would pick u to be x, because then we could take the derivative, and the derivative would eventually be 0, but we don't know how to integrate the natural log of x, so we're going to let u, in this case, equal the natural log of x. du is 1 over x, dx. We're going to let dv equal x, dx and then v is equal to one-half x squared. Well, now we have u times v, which is one-half x squared, natural log of x, minus the integral of v du, which is one over x times one-half x squared dx. Well, we have one-half x squared, natural log of x, and that's going to be minus the integral. The one over x cancels out with one over the x's, so we have one-half x dx. Next step is 1 half x natural log of x minus, if we add a, uh, add a, a 1 to the exponent, we get x squared, and that's going to be times 1 fourth now, plus c. So y is equal to all of this, 
And now we uh, use the condition that y is negative 1, so y is negative 1, when x is equal to 1. So we have 1 half x, natural log of 1, minus 1 fourth, times 1 squared plus c. We have negative 1 is equal to, the natural log of 1 is 0. Actually, this would be a 1 here. Natural log of 1 is 0, so that becomes 0. We have minus 1 fourth plus c. So c is equal to negative 1 plus a fourth, which is negative 3 fourths. So we have y is equal to 1 half x, natural log of x, minus 1 fourth x squared, and then uh, minus 3 fourths. Example 4, solving for the unknown integral. We're going to let u equal e to the x, so the derivative is e to the x dx. dv is equal to cosine of x dx, and so v is equal to sine of x. Well, now we have uh, uv, so we have uh, e to the x sine of x minus the integral of v du, which is e to the x sine of x dx. Well, we didn't get very far because instead of having ex cosine of x, we have ex sine of x. So uh, we didn't really accomplish much with this first step. Well, now let's, let's do the process again. We'll let u equal the new u equal e to the x. du is e to the x dx. Uh, dv is equal to sine of x dx. So then v is negative cosine of x. Well, now let's, let's include this original. We have the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to, we have this piece right here, e to the x sine of x, and then minus, we have u times v, which is e negative e to the x cosine of x minus the integral of v du which is negative e to the x cosine of x. Let's take care of all these negatives. We have e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x. Now we have a minus, minus, and a minus, which is going to end up being minus integral of e to the x cosine of x, and I need the dx there. Well, notice that we have integral e to the x cosine of x dx here, and we have the exact same thing over here. So we're going to add integral of e to the x cosine of x dx to both sides. e to the x cosine of x dx. So in this one, we need to end up where we started, right here. We started with this. We end up with this on the end. Well, now we can say that there are two of these. So 2 integral e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x and then plus the c. So finally, e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to 1 half e to the x sine of x plus 1 half e to the x cosine of x plus c. Integral using tabular integration. Well, instead of repeating the process of integration by parts, we can let uh, the d, we can take the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, derivative of that is 2, derivative of that is 0. So we want to keep taking the derivative until we get to 0. And then we can do the integral part as e to the x, integral of e to the x is e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. Now here's what you do with tabular. You draw an arrow, draw an arrow like this, draw an arrow like that. So you skip, you go down one. And this is a plus, minus, and plus. So the integral of x squared e to the x is e to the x, x squared. So x squared e to the x, and that's a positive. And then minus, minus 2x e to the x, minus 2x e to the x, and then plus 2e to the x, and then plus c. So we can do this one with a tabular form. As long as you have one function in which you take the derivative enough, it gets to 0. So if we uh, do this example 6 with tabular, we have the derivative part would be x to the third, 3x squared, 6x, 6, and 0. And the integral part starts out with sine of x. Integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x. Integral of negative cosine of x is negative sine of x. Integral of negative sine of x is cosine of x. 
and then we end with sine of x. So we draw the arrows, draw the arrow, draw the arrow down here, and one more. We have plus, minus, plus, minus. You always start with a plus. So we have a plus negative. That means we're going to have a negative x to the third cosine of x, and then a minus, minus, which is a plus 3x squared sine of x, and then we have a plus 6x uh, cosine of x, and then finally a minus 6 sine of x, and then plus c. So rather than doing repeated integration by parts, we can do this with tabular because we have one function in which you know, we take the enough de derivatives, we get to zero. Example seven, anti-differentiating natural log of x. Let's let u equal the natural log of x, so then du equals one over x, dx, and then dv is just equal to dx. So when we integrate, we have v is equal to just x. Well, now we have u times v, which is x, natural log of x, minus the integral of v du, which is x times one over x dx. We have x natural log of x minus, that just becomes the integral of dx. So we have x natural log of x minus x, and then plus c.